Welcome to our Digital Summit, Mr. David Shea. Um, it's always wonderful to hear Gary Shapiro speak because um, we proudly get to cover a lot of his content through our tech properties like in Gadget and TechCrunch and HuffPost. And it really leads into what I'm going to spend a little bit of time talking to you cats about this morning. It's the Connected Human. Um, so let's get on with this. So here's the question that most people sort of pull me aside and say, hey dude, what's going on with consumers? Are we all clear about where they're headed? Well, the reality is no. We have no idea because they're massively confused about all this technology. You heard some of what Gary talked about already this morning. So given that's the case though, and this proves it for me by the way, this is the Venice Biennale, this is the bag that everybody was walking around town with. It pretty much explains that as much as we have all these amplifiers, people still don't know who the hell they are. So it also tells me though that I'm from the world of TLA, if some of you are here as well. The three letter acronyms like this, FII and <laughs> this thing, cover your ass, I use that all the time. And then the new generation, the younger gen, which you cats are all going to be talking about, and this is clearly what's happening with music right now, are talking about this, aren't they? YOLO. <laughs> Who would have thought EDM would be such a big thing right now? So YOLO, we've got FOMO, fear of missing out. Most of you probably know what this is, I hope you do. Does everybody know what this is? TL, TLDR? Too long, didn't read. So basically these little bastards are using four letter acronyms to tell us to piss off. That's really what's happening there. But what's also interesting, it's all about links versus publications. But if you get it right, building content is a good strategy. But if you get your content strategy right, it doesn't compete with advertising. Uh-uh. It competes with popular culture. And that's the world we're in. So a little bit of gratification that you're building, awesome. Because at the end of the day, my background is in media and creativity. So if we look at it, you know, as a publisher, we used to look to stuff from brands that's evergreen. What's the content we can rely on that's never going to date? And then we look at stuff that's seasonal. How do we target people's day-to-day -day habits so they're actually, we catch them right when they want to be sorted? And then what do we do for one-offs? How do we plan around events that we know are coming, but we can only plan for one-off? Like the Queen's Jubilee birthday, as an example. I'm sure you guys got that marked on your calendar. Anyhow, so brands want to own breaking news. So that's the new new, right? So when you know Prince George was born last year, this is the first um, ad that I saw, or brand experience that I saw from Air New Zealand. Travel by Sork, so last year, kind of cool. Coke, kind of cool. Starbucks, cute. Don't get the green grass, but everything else works for me. Um, Mondelez, cute. Um, Charmin toilet paper, not so cute. Looks like 1986 Photoshop for me. Holy dooly, dude. Um, and then Play-Doh, which I think is absolutely bang on. But then what's also fascinating is that if you're trying to watch things live socially, and I haven't had a TV for 15 years, and when I'm trying to watch it, it's like a stream, a river of information. I'm like, what the hell is going on? I go around to a friend's place, I'm like, oh, that, cool, television still works. Amazing. And we all know why Pharrell was wearing that hat. Um, he was, he was honouring... Um, it was uh, Buffalo Gals by Malcolm McLaren from 1985. That hat was designed by um, Vivian Westwood. And what was amazing though, we all forgot about that because Arby's came along and said, hey dude, can, he, can we have our hat back? Which clearly identifies with their identity. So that's a brand who's jumping on that culture of that moment right then and then. And then Pepsi jumped on it as well and said, yeah man, can they have his hat back? You don't even have to originate the news. It's just great to jump on top of it as well. But creativity has to be redefined. Here's the, here's the thing that I think about. A lot of people talk about things right before and then straight at a tentpole event. People still love tentpole events. We all rally around the fact something's happening right here, right now. Now, 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 now. But then the next day, mm, treat it like a one night stand, never hear from people again. Now what I think you should do is think about the brand attention curve like this, before, now, next. So can you actually create the calm and the chaos? And that point in time, that's probably a really good time to activate around consumers. Because that's all I care about. Is what are we doing to captivate these humans who are at the end of these screens for us? Because at the end of the day, here's the good news for you. Digital, and that's why you're here today, is the only place you can actually break original news. You can't do it on TV, newspaper, print, radio as a brand. Uh-uh, no can do. But it happens for you in digital, which is awesome. But you have to think about it, that people live, communicate, entertain, and get information fundamentally differently today. So ideas have to come big new fast. Not because we want them, it's because consumers, humans, are demanding them. And what's also fascinating is this is stuff I used to talk about all the time. I used to say, oh, the future is going to be this stuff. Awesome. But I sat back six months ago and said, oh, shit, I can find a company that's every single one of these things today. So the future's now, including this bloody thing. So that thing is called the Personal Marlin System. That is actually a product you can buy today. Um, if we could get the audio working, lads, that'd be really good for me. So this is um, Australia. That's the country I'm from, if you're wondering about my accent. Um, not British, not South African, not New Zealand. And this is the town I'm from, actually. That's the house I grew up in. That's my family and one of ten kids. Twelve people, two bedroom house. A whole lot of therapy there I'm still trying to get through, but we'll get there. Um, it wasn't until I was 17 that I bought my first car. And at that point, I felt freedom, independence, and self-expression. That's the generation I'm from. But what's amazing for me is these kids are now born connected, aren't they? We've seen this. 
the vast majority of kids under the age of two, not the vast majority, that's wrong, 37% of children under the age of two know how to use your touchscreen. But what's amazing for me is it means that we're just one click away when we think about these devices and the ability to touch them. We're one click away from our most interpersonal thoughts. And you think about it, when people said after the day of the Oscars, say, hey, who won the Oscars? Well, Samsung won the Oscars, didn't they? Who cares about the awards? That thing happened. So even celebrities understanding that personal expression is the new form of entertainment. That's the world we're competing with. Now, is it all about consumers consuming content? Mm, possibly. I actually think it's different. Because at the end of the day, consumers are now the creator. Awesome. They're also the critic. And they're also the curator. So these guys are all empowered to be able to do this because they're swarming to the light, aren't they? And there's lots and lots and lots of bright lights to swarm to. So what's difficult about that, though, is this. You have to understand that audiences now have audiences. And they're the things that we need to think about. So it's the beautiful ripple effect of what really is a network and how that really plays. But you don't just create content. That's not your bag anymore, man. You're the curators of conversations. So how do we talk back authentically? Well, let's talk about context. Building content, smart content, putting in smart places, sounds really simple, really hard to do. Because at the end of the day, people buy things emotionally and they justify their purchase rationally. It doesn't matter whether it's a $5 bottle of water or a $50,000 car. We make these decisions personally, we justify them rationally. Here's an example, I mean, that's the middle of summer in New York City. That's not a line for a Apple or Samsung, it's a line for bloody croissant meat donut. The mighty cronut. And what's fascinating for me about this thing is that people line up at 6.30 in the morning, by 8.30 they sell out. Um, by 9 o'clock they sell out when the doors open actually, so they get a half an hour window for people to buy only two of them at a time. And it really shows that people's, well firstly humans are idiots because we'll line up for anything, but people's behaviours are influenced by their peers. So given that's the case, just to give you an example, the number of brands that people are prepared to brag about per year is less than you think. It's actually only five to nine. You have five to nine opportunities for people to brag about you. Fragmentation is just getting wider and wider and wider and wider. Because for every one of these amazing experiences that we see, there's probably 20 similar that you have to meet consumers where they need to be met. So that's something you need to consider. Now, I grew up in the information age, as many of you have in the room as well. We're right in the middle of the age of social, as you know. This is my all-time favorite social image. How good is that? I'm telling you, man, when we get to the pearly gates, we're going to be in trouble, that's for damn sure. And then we've got this, so it's still about land grabs. I don't know about that, man. I think likes is kind of a rubbish concept. I much prefer the verbs. So there's plenty of verbs coming to you for you to determine the value of what you think your social currency is. Share, want, purchase, desire, sympathize. I mean, who wants to like somebody going to a funeral? Uh-uh, no good. So there's new verbs coming to us to try and understand what their currency looks like. The one I love most is share. 70% of consumers last month shared something. And in that share is a link to stuff that we're trying to buy or trying to sell, and that's still really, really important. But here's the deal, man, about those consumers consuming content. Um, this is interesting, right? So this is, allows me to check in. This is KLM Airlines. They used to allow me to check into my flight by checking out somebody's Facebook and LinkedIn profile. <laughs> that shit in the real world is called stalking, by the way, so don't let's try that. But this is amazing. This is the country of Sweden. They're so proud of their brand, they will give you the keys to their official Twitter account for a week, and you can be the amplifier of their voice. How about that for transparency? Pretty damn rock and roll. You just have to think about being reactive, though. You also have to think about being relevant. So instant message, instant response, right conversation, and make it remarkable. Wow. Good luck. Because that stuff is really quite hard to do. And it's also overwhelming. There are, we are hit with 1,900 media messages per day, and 250 of those are ads. And then given that's the case, it becomes underwhelming, because I can't find what I'm looking for with all that overwhelming information. Data point of one. What's also interesting for me is the sixth largest contributor to stress today is no surprise, you guys, it's media overload. So that fear of missing out culture that we are, it's actually killing us. So something's got to change here, I suspect. And what's changing is people's taste, especially when it comes to advertising. So I love it when brands can be the calm and the chaos. I think it's about presence. Can you create a stillness? Can you create engagement that's different? Because the engagement we want is attention. We want to hold people's attention because I do believe that if you can create mind share in a brand, people, then you can actually create market share. And what I think is also interesting about it is that this is the world we're in in 2005 when the Pope was sworn in, and this is 2013. That's the new reality, my dear friends. And that's what we see every time you go somewhere. All we're doing are facing screens to face a live experience. Why don't we put that shit down occasionally? It's, I'd ask that. Um, then we've got this thing. We are in the game of entertainment and information for the longest time. That's it. That's just the gig. The new new is be useful. People call it brand utility. What does that mean? Can you just be of use? And that's something that we really care about because this is the thing that we care about the most. If I were you, I'd design up, not down. Start on the mobile, because it's the only thing we all have rattling around in our pockets. It's the only thing we really touch 150 times a day if you're a digital native. 
150 times. Imagine if your brand's front and center on that thing. Amazing. But a lot of people still think it's an infant, man. I think that's rubbish because in 1997, I could text message a Coca-Cola vending machine and interact with their products mobily. Incredible. But experimentation is necessary when it comes to, uh, well, here's Music Week after all. We can use this, can't we? But here's the deal, man. The reason for it is the mobile experience isn't great. Look at ads on mobile. Rubbish. Look at experiences. That's my Starbucks app. By the time that fires up, I live in New York City, dude. Map of North America, thanks very much. Genius. And then if I look at the app next to it, I paid $1.99 for that thing. Ooh, that wasn't me, promise. Um, that thing on the right, that was an app that says, how long can I hold down my thumb for on the screen? Absolutely genius, man, isn't it? But there are blue sky opportunities, I shit you not. Understand today that people download fewer apps, they spend more time, more money on the apps they have. The average number of apps people have on their smartphones is about 41. The average number of users is about five. So, you have to think about this. When you build these mobile experiences, 70% of consumers will try it once. You have a one time. Now on the desktop, you can iterate your way out of it, man, no problem. But when it comes to mobile, it's like, you gotta surprise and delight, otherwise people are gonna think you're dead quick. But the good news is, about 80% of people that actually interact with the brand mobily are power users. So they really care about your brand and it creates advocacy, as opposed to awareness. Awareness-based marketing is just amplified marketing, man. That's where you spend your marketing money, great. But advocacy is people brag about your brand because you're a brand of use, cool. Now, well, I love it. I'm all about location, 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 because I'm aware of what somebody's doing in the context of what they're doing in it. This is brand abuse. Look at Band-Aids. This is an example of a, a physical company doing something digitally authentic. Band-Aid have a limited edition Muppet series. You put it on your kid's owie, you swipe your smartphone over the top of it, and bang, you're interacting with the cartoon characters. Brilliant. And if you look at Toyota, they did the same thing. They understand that kids love to drive the backseat driver, they call them. You know, they love to drive the same contours the road the parents do. So that's what Toyota did. They built an app that allows kids to do exactly that, but put it in their language of cartoon. That's brand useful. But if you're doing anything mobily, I love this quote from Da Vinci, simplicity is the ultimate sophistication. That's just something to think about constantly when we're building our mobile experiences, my dear friends. What about ads? This is where you guys spend your media money. This is how we pay rent as an organization. Thanks very much. Well, it's changing, man. The world of programmatic is enabling better creativity. It's creating efficiency. So we've got this amazing thing called programmatic. It's not going away. It just it, it creates a better environment for you to do things more effectively. It means you can target the right person, right place, right message, right on. You don't have it's less leakage in the way that you buy media. Great. But the future of it might look like this. I'll go into Google, type in something like Adidas. I'm a sneaker freak. And then what might pop up is a pair of kicks. I check out Adidas shoes and then think, oh, tap over to Facebook, fight around there for five minutes. And then an ad turns up. It's called behavioral retargeting. The industry's been doing it for 20 years. Then we minimize the browser, pick up our cell phone, head to lunch. The path to purchase today is now destroyed. And so I think it's gonna look like this in the future. I get a direct response from Adidas saying, hey, Shingy, there's our shoes. Here's a turn-by-turn -turn directions from a map, and here's a discount coupon. That's the sort of targeting you guys are gonna have at your disposal to be able to get people the right time, right place, right message. Brilliant. Native advertising, you can hear a lot about this. Native advertising is difficult, by the way. It doesn't scale. If you want native at scale, it's called display advertising. <laughs> if you want native, it's you and your relationship with me, the publisher. That's kind of the vibe. It doesn't scale, so let's not be naive about it. What we need to do is think about harmony. What is your brand saying across the entire digital river of what you're saying across those experiences, both top line and below the line? So that's very important to talk about what your brand harmony is. What's the symphony you're creating? Um, here's an example of one. This is Pinterest. Um, you can't actually register, um, you can't actually buy media. And what they allow you to do here is, what they did is they registered several hundred accounts, they timed the uploads, and what looks like a massive homepage takeover was just the brand participating in that environment authentically. And the cost of that was zero. So while you're supplementing scale with your paid media, think about going into environments authentically and putting your brand in the center of those in places where you normally can't buy media. That's real native. Look at this, six seconds, you've got this cat, I think it's Kobe, um, turning an amazing little experience out for Nike. Beautiful, who would have thought it, man? And you look at something like this, um, selfies. You've got people like Zappos going into your Instagram photographs and giving people styling advice. God knows I need it. Amazing, so that's what's happening there as well. So that's about authenticity in the space of advertising while you're supplementing scale across ads. But where are we headed? A Couple more minutes on that. Understanding human needs is half the job of meeting them, aren't they? Given that's the case, here are your new consumer. Charlie Chapman to this world. The renegades. These guys have more disposal to applications, distribution, techniques for build than we've ever had before. They're the renegades, my dear friends. The freedom thinkers. They're the revolutionaries. 
They are the ones who are the new, new. So what everybody was watching the Social Olympics, dude, I was checking out the Selfie Olympics. There are thousands of people jumping into their bathrooms, doing these crazy selfie expressions for the winning of selfies, the selfie awards, amazing. These are renegades, man. And it gives them hyper gratification because they have the ability to jump in the middle of this thing and say, so I get immediate gratification for what I'm doing. Big data, creative guy talking about big data, not so good, but here's the thing, man. It gives you the when and it gives you the where. But I'll tell you what it doesn't give you, it doesn't give you the why. That's the human insight that you guys are empowered to be able to deliver back to what people can do with the, the advent of big data. Everything you're gonna have, all the things that Gary talked about in terms of the innovation curve of technology, physical devices are gonna have built-in intelligence. So you will not have to go seeking stuff out, it'll come to you, it'll be pushed to you because these devices have the built-in intelligence to do it. They do it today, man, they just get restricted because people freak out when they think you're being creepy. But it has the ability to do that today. These sort of things. Two wrists, one face. Only dorky white dudes are wearing Google Glass, FYI. Um, but see-through data is gonna be very important. This is not gonna go away, this is stuff that's gonna exist. It's gonna be very important, but at the moment it seems like it's limited to the face and to the wrists. But I'm seeing other devices that are actually wrapped around you. So we're gonna see more and more devices that separate from the face and the wrist, no doubt. Okay. Now today, your television, when you run TV commercials, it gives people permission to ignore you. And they go, hmm? And they decide to cross shop heavily. But what's important here is that in the future, you are gonna become ecosystem marketers. Your television will talk to your tablet and your mobile phone. So you'll be able to, hey, hey, I'm gonna run a 30 and a 60, because people still love TV, seemingly. And then we'll push an experience authentic to the tablet and push another experience authentic to the, to the mobile experience. So given that's the case, that will be ecosystem marketing. You will no longer be digital. It'll just be all about ecosystems, in my mind. But your brand has to be an experience. Let's check one out. If you don't tear up, you're a hardened bastard, that's for sure. But here's the second thing, man. Beckham doesn't work for free. And in that four minute experience, every single second has a blatant, 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 blatant Adidas logo. Awesome. But it works, man. Just tugs for the human heartstrings, doesn't it? But there's something about subtlety versus blatancy. I don't know. Check this thing out. Darling, please rescue me. band from Upstate, they were going to a gig on Upstate New York, they had their instruments stolen, they did an impromptu jam session on their cell. Somebody captured it on a smartphone and took off two point, somewhere about 2.7 million search results for this unknown band at that point. This was rumoured to be a hoax seeded by Apple that they never denied. It doesn't matter, my dear friends, whether you do something completely blatant like Adidas or something completely subtle, perhaps by um, Apple, if it's good content people will pass it around, that's the key. It's all about stories. That's the key to this whole thing, is it like this? Good, wait. Good boy. Here. Good, wait. Turn on the ignition. Let's go. So let's unpack this. This is a dog rescue company from New Zealand. The only thing they're trying to do is make sure dogs don't get killed. And then they decided to team up with Minnie and do this thing. And there's three of these, and they all go for about three minutes. It's about nine minutes of brand love that will never be a 30 or 60 second TV commercial 
but this experience has been seen a hundred million times. And it's absolutely amazing, it's highly contagious, it's even shot low fine there's nothing spunky about this video other than this great story. And you guys don't give a shit what I'm saying, you just want to sit down and watch this damn video with you. It's incredibly how cool this thing actually is. It's all about thinking differently about the way you tell stories, because guess what? Television, gaming, internet, mobile, it's all blurring. Those platforms are all, it's all the, the screen you face at that time is really the first screen. But this is really what it's about, right? There are, any sequence of time that you can hold somebody's attention is the right timing for you to build those video experiences in my mind. Whether it's six seconds, or if I look at House of Cards at 13 hours, wow, that's a beautiful experience. They hold your attention for 13 hours. Who would have, known, who would have thought? So it's not about lack of attention, it's about right time, right place, right experience. I'm an artist. These are the three primary colours we use to paint every paint painting in the universe. It's blue, it's red, it's yellow. That's what we start our palettes with. With you guys, when you're dreaming digitally, just think about technology content distribution first. And with that, you can dream whatever you like, because here's what's interesting. You are the new creative storytellers. That's your job, that's your gig, that's your career. Um, whose quote was this? Imagination is more important than knowledge. So he came up with the quantum theory, super smart dude, we all know that. But did you also know that he was a classically trained violinist? So my challenge to you is make sure you're exercising both sides of your noggin. Please make sure you're exercising the creative side of it, because guess what? You can make the path your path. Stay empowered to do what you want to do. You can be inspired across digital to come up with things that are totally different. And staying curious is a great way to do it. Do these things that you're doing today, because you have to have desire to be in the digital space, man. You have to use the tools that these young creators are using as well, so you can become an experience expert. Just don't go into the top ten of Omni, uh, go into the top ten of Comscore or Nielsen and say that's it, my my media plan. That's not where you need to be. You need to actually look at stuff where you are driving the passion, because consumers will see that and they'll engage with you in a way that's never been done before. And oh, the places you'll go. Who knows, man? But what's amazing for me is that these are the things I would recommend. Make sure you're remixing your brand and your budgets. Create a remix culture inside your organization to experiment. Find the right people, because the power of the influencer is more important today than ever before. Harness pre-existing communities and go into those communities to be authentic. Supplement your scaled ad buyers with something that allows you to participate in a brand authentically. Give over your brand to the consumers, because without your permission, they're doing it anyway. And if you don't believe me, go into Pinterest and type in your brand. People do funky stuff with stuff. Awesome. Embrace these platforms. Please, please, please learn about what's going on with these young platforms. In fact, give them a call and see if we can be the first brand on their deck. How cool would that be? And then lastly, you know, create some fail, failure in your organization, but fail forward. Don't copy somebody. That's not pioneering. Pioneering takes risk. With risk comes great reward. And I think that would be amazing for you guys to consider. And with that, last and all-time favorite quote is from Catherine Hepburn. If you obey all the rules, you miss all the fun. Thank you very much. Thank you.